In this exercise, you'll learn how to add extra screens into your app. Specifically, you'll modify Bullseye so that when the player taps the info button in the bottom right, it presents a new about screen that shows the rules of the game. If you remember way back to the beginning of this course in the buttons and actions section, I said that every screen in your app is managed by something called a view controller. Right now, Bullseye just has one screen, so it has one view controller, which the template has already created for us. We added the user interface for the view controller in main.storyboard. We added the Swift code that goes along with the view controller into a file called viewcontroller.swift. In this exercise, we're going to add a second view controller into Bullseye for the About screen. To do this, we need to do four things. First, we need to create a new view controller class in a new Swift file. Second, we need to add a new view controller into our storyboard and add all the controls we want to display on that, including a close button. Third, we want to make that new view controller appear when the user taps the info button. Fourth and finally, we want to make that view controller disappear when the user taps the close button. Creating a new view controller is one of the most common tasks that you'll be using while making your own app. So this is really important stuff to know. Let's try it out. Remember, the first thing we need to do here is create a new view controller class in a new Swift file. To do this, go to File, New File. And in this case, you want to select the iOS Cocoa Touch class. This allows you to specify the name of the class you want to create and what it's a subclass of. And it just saves you a little bit of typing of code. In this case, we're going to name the class About View Controller. And you want to make sure that subclass of is set to UI View Controller. And you click Next. Make sure that the bullseye target is checked and click Create. OK, the next step is we need to add a view controller to the storyboard and configure it the way we want. So I'm going to open up main.storyboard. So I'm going to drag over here so there's some extra space and open the utilities panel. And inside here, making sure the object library is open, I want to drag a new view controller into this. Remember, the storyboard is where you configure all the controls and the view controller dot Swift is, or your about view controller dot Swift is where all your Swift code is. All right, so let's lay out our controls. We're going to add a text view into there. Just search for text view, drag it in, and this placeholder text pops up. We'll change that in a second. And we'll make it about that big. And we'll also add a button. And we'll drag that down here. And we'll call the button close. For the text here, you can just double click it. And you can change it to whatever you want. In my case, I've already typed out the instructions in advance. I'm just going to paste them in to save a little bit of typing. It doesn't really matter what you put here if you're following along. OK, now that we have this, one more thing we have to do, check this and uncheck editable. Otherwise, the user could tap it and start editing it, which we don't really want in this case. So how do we make it so this new view controller appears when the player taps the I button? Well, storyboards have a neat trick for this. Segways. This is spelled S-E-G-U-E-S, -E -E but it's pronounced the same way as the silly scooters. And a segue is a transition from one screen to another. And they're pretty easy to add. All you have to do is select the button that you want the user to tap to present the new view controller. Hold down the control B key on your keyboard and drag over to the other view controller. A pop-up will appear that says action segue and it'll give you a couple different options of how to present this. In this case, we want present modally. So select that option. And now you'll see this arrow appear and this arrow represents the segue. And you have a couple different options here of how to configure it. And one of the options here is the transition, which you can change from the default if you like. And to sh just to show you, we are going to change it to flip horizontal. And um, that's really it for right now. So let's go ahead and see what we've got so far. Now if I tap the I button in the lower right, it does a flip and it shows the new view controller. Now if I tap the close button, nothing happens yet. So we need to hook up some code to the close button to make it dismiss itself. And we already know how to connect something up to the close button, right? Use action methods. So I'm going to switch back and open up about view controller.swift and let's add a new action method to for the close button. Hold on, first I'm going to get rid of some of these comments uh, for things we don't need and I'm going to fix the formatting. I just did that to clean up the file a bit. Okay, so we need IB action func close. And inside here we need to write the code to dismiss the view controller. And it turns out there's a built-in function for that called dismiss. And I'm going to use autocomplete here. And it has two parameters. One is whether to animate the dismissal, which of course we want to do. And the second is a closure to call upon completion of the dismissal. So remember how we added a closure for the alert controller to run some code when the button is tapped? You could do a similar thing here to find out when the 
um, view controller is dismissed. But we don't need anything here, so we're just going to put in nil. Okay, so now we need to hook up the button to call this method. So if I go back to main.storyboard and I try to drag from close up to the view controller, I'm looking for a method here called close, but I don't see it. So why is that happening? Well, the problem is I never configured the view controller that I added to the storyboard to know about the name of the class that I created over here. I have to associate the two. And the way you do this is you select the view controller, which you can do by clicking the yellow button here or finding it over here in the tree. And you go to the tab called the identity inspector. And here you have an item called custom class. You can think of this as saying what class is associated with this view controller here in the storyboard. And just click the arrow here and you select the name of whatever you created for your project. And we named ours about view controller. Now that they're associated, I can drag up to the view controller and there you go. I see my close method right there. So let's give that a try. I'm going to build and run. Now if I tap the I button, the new view controller appears. Now if I have to tap the close button, it goes back. All right. 